Um, I've done a little bit of um, Bible study yeah. and, and how the scriptures were actually formulated. And it's, it's so true that they were, they were written, what, 100, 150, 175 is another, um, another year. And they've only used Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But it, it wasn't the actual person who knew you who wrote those scriptures, but it was the community. That's and so right. you would be having all sorts of all sorts of stories put forward. Oh, yes. this happened, that happened, and little legends would come in and um, parables and... Yes. Um, the very earliest manuscripts that they have now were five verses only right. of John. Yes. In John chapter, I think it's 18. Um, those, those were in 125. Uh, so they were written around 25 to 30 years after John's death. Okay. And that's the very earliest manuscript they have. Um, but it's only five verses. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the very earliest complete manuscript of the New Testament that mm. they actually have is actually in the early 3rd century, uh, late 2nd century, early 3rd century. And, um, and that, that you, you, if you imagine what it was like, there's the copying of text, mm. the copying of text. And, of course, most copies were not done for posterity. They were done... To be used, mm -hmm. so you know. Of course, they got very grubby and used, yes, uh, yes. as you would expect. And uh, and so the preservation of texts wasn't mm. really a high priority at that point in time. Mm. Mm. And and so it was primarily word of mouth where trans where mm. truth was transmitted. And unfortunately, that got quite severely distorted at different times. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I know I mostly enjoy using scripture, mostly for prayer, yeah. to be able to read. But part, it only has to be a short amount, yeah. just for it to reach your heart. You sort of read through it and some words will come out to you and you'll yep. take those words and yep. contemplate on them and um, yep. reach deep down. So was that the question you wanted to ask? Well, that's this? really... Yeah. Um, so what, do you, what is your opinion we've yeah. got here? How can Christians read scripture to evoke prayer and contemplation, to yeah. open their hearts to God? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I feel quite strongly that there's like probably three primary things mm. that uh, I would recommend to mm. Christians to do. There are whole groups of, and this applies really to anything you read, mm -hmm. not just to the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I suppose for most Christians, they see the Bible as God's word. But, uh, but if we see the Bible as a book, just like any other book mm -hmm. for a moment, then we can read any book in the same way that I'm recommending to, that Christians read the Bible. And that is this. Any verse in the Bible that encourages you or makes you feel like being more violent or mm. angry or resistive or emotionally disconnected yeah. or any, mm. any verse like that, yeah. then my, my recommendation to Christians reading those verses is to not assume that they are God's word. Absolutely. Mm. Because God's words always upbuild and encourage. Mm -hmm. They always are loving. They always are beautiful. They cause soul openings. Mm. And any passage in the Bible, and there are many passages in the Bible, as you know, that uh, do cause a person to go into quite a lot of doubt and, and, and mm. misunderstandings about uh, God and, 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 and all sorts of actual issues. And there's the feeling that sometimes overcomes you when you're reading the Bible in different passages of, whoa, that yeah. was pretty heavy yeah. and that was pretty dark. Yeah. And these feelings are telling you that, that these are not necessarily the reflections of God's Absolutely. word, but rather the reflections of men who are using fear, violence mm -hmm. and other things to control people. So what I would do with anything like that is I would put them to one side mm -hmm. as unresolved mm -hmm. in terms of uh, I can't see how this is a part of God or mm -hmm. God's word, mm -hmm. right? Then there's another group of uh, scriptures that you can read, and uh, the Bible is littered with these groups of scriptures that are inspiring to the soul. They are scriptures that inspire you to ethical behaviour, inspire, inspire you to more moral behaviour, inspire an openness towards truth, inspire an openness towards becoming more loving, inspire an openness towards logic and wisdom, 
and uh, and many of these verses are in the Old Testament as much mm. as in the New. Mm. And and these kind of verses are the verses as a Christian that I would be I would be sitting with and contemplating. Certainly, I'd be allowing myself to ponder about Certainly. and reflect upon. And because because if you can allow yourself to ponder and reflect upon those particular things, they will inspire you to loving action and inspire you to personal growth. And that's definitely something that's connected with God. Mm. That's mm. how God operates. You know, sure. God's always trying to inspire us to become perfect. Sure. And, uh, and so my suggestion to a Christian is those particular verses, you don't throw them out with the other verses. Mm. Mm. You know, and this is a, the problem with having mm. a discussion about any book is that generally a person says, well, this particular thing is wrong in that book, so I throw out the whole book. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not a wise thing to yeah. do under any circumstances. Often there is truth mixed with error mm -hmm. in the same book, just as there is truth mixed with error in the Bible. There's truth mixed with error in the Koran. There's truth mixed with error in most holy books on yep. the planet. Yep. And in fact, in pretty much all books on the planet, mm. there's truth mixed with error. Now, I find it interesting that the average person, when they read an average book, they go, oh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, that sounds really good. Oh, that doesn't sound good. You know, they, they have a different opinion of the different passages that mm. they're reading, right? Mm. But when they read something that purports itself to be God's word, oh, yeah. such as the Koran or the Bible, yeah. they're now reading it, trying to believe everything, yeah. which is really an illogical proposition mm. when you think about it mm. for a number of reasons. Like, it's impossible for all of the infinity of God to be fit into a book. Of course. And it's impossible for all of the truth of God to be fit into of a course. book. In fact, it's impossible for all the truth of how our body works to be fit in one book, <laughs> let alone the truth of God, you know. So, so it's impossible for these books that claim to be God's word to actually be God's mm. word mm. for very, very simple reasons. Mm. Uh, now, if I read the Bible assuming that everything in it is God's word, then I'm going to try to force myself into accepting different things that I would normally, under a different circumstance, go, oh, I think I can discard that because that doesn't feel very loving, right? Mm. And this is the problem we face when mm. we read the Bible and any other holy book. We need to see them as a book rather than seeing them as everything that God has said. Mm -hmm. Because if we see them as everything God has said, what we try to do then is we try to shut down our own internal soul's ability to determine what is loving mm. and what is unloving. Mm. Mm. Whereas when we read another book that doesn't purport itself to be God's word, we have a far more open mind. What we do with another book is we go, yeah, that was not loving at all. I don't think I can believe that. Or we go, wow, that was really fascinating. That really caused an openness in my heart. Wow, that's something that I really want to retain. And we do that quite easily with other books. But as soon as the book is claimed to be God's word, we throw out this, what Filter. I would view <laughs> as a reasonable, mm -hmm. logical way of an analysing truth versus error, and we throw it all out. And we just accept all of the truth and all of the error mm -hmm. as truth in the book. Mm -hmm. And this is a very dangerous thing to do. Because when you accept everything that's truth and error in the same th book, you discount your own ability to determine what is truth and error. Mm. So what you're doing is you're giving up your ability to feel mm. and sense what is right and what is wrong. Now, if God is ever going to write his law on our hearts, as the Bible says, we need to understand what is right and wrong without needing mm. a book. Mm. And in fact, the only book that God actually has available to him to write down his feelings is your heart yeah. and yeah. and if you don't use that book yeah. if you're already discounting yeah. the usage of that book you're throwing yeah. it away yeah. and and instead reading a book instead in its place mm. you have thrown away the only way mm. that god can enter your heart and in that respect you could say you know in in a small way while you're if Let's just say if you're at one with God, then you actually become the Word made flesh because you are the living Word. 
That's correct. And it's in the hearts of people who are at one with God. And this is where, you know, often John chapter 1 is mm. misinterpreted in terms of myself. Mm. I became the living word of God mm. because God's word was written on my heart. Yes. Now, now, everybody thinks that that was my unique position, but it's not. Mm. Every single person who ever lives yeah. and who has ever lived has the opportunity yeah. of having the same word yeah. written on their heart mm -hmm. in the same way. Mm -hmm. And then they become a living word of God mm. where everything they do, every action they take, everything they feel is in complete yes. harmony yes. with God yes. and complete harmony with love. Mm. And this is where I feel it's very, very dangerous to have a book I agree. that yeah. is obviously uh, got errors in it yeah. and then taken as the only truth when, and then you give, you give up this ability to have the word of God written on your heart when you do that. Mm. And what you do is you call the book God's word when mm. reality is God wants to make you mm. the living word mm. of God. Mm. And I feel that brings me to probably the third issue with reading the books. And that is, if we read the book with two primary goals in mind, and that is the goal of knowing God yes. is number one. So what does this passage or verse in the Bible show me about God? Now, if it shows me anything unloving about God, it's probably not true. Because God is a God only of love. God isn't a God of wrath, not a God of punishment, not a God of all of those other mm, things. Mm. He is a God of wisdom and he is a God of justice, but not in the manner that most Christians believe because they both have accepted the Bible version of justice, which is violent. Mm. And God's not violent mm. in the way God administers justice. Mm. So, so God, is not, God is better than the best person on earth. Mm. And if we make this presumption yeah. that God is better than the best person on earth, then when we read the Bible, every time we see a characteristic or attribute of God that is better than most people on earth, we then go, wow, that's something that tells me about God. Mm. Conversely, is any time we see anything that tells me something that's like the average person on earth, we go, that can't be God. <laughs> <laughs> right? It can't be God because it's angry and the average mm. person on earth is angry and God, you know, God's better than the average person on earth. You know? Well, that can't be... God, because that was violent, and yeah. the average person on earth is violent, but God's not violent, you know. Yeah. So, so we can discount all of those things. So we can read with intelligence. Mm -hmm. We can read with our logic. Mm -hmm. In addition, we need to read with a second issue, and that is we need to reflect upon how we can become more loving through what we're reading. So when I read, when I read the Bible, for example, now, I reflect upon what it teaches me about ethics, what it teaches me about morals, what it teaches me about love, and how I can become more of that mm -hmm. by removing from me the underlying emotional tendencies that I have to not be like that. Yes. Not by trying to be like that. So most Christians are trying to be good, yeah. while at the same time they recognise they have tendencies towards bad. Yeah. My suggestion is recognise the tendencies towards bad and eradicate them from the soul through a process of feeling, through a process of identifying what they are, what the motivations are and why you have them, and releasing them from the soul. Now, if the average Christian did that, I feel they would become at one with God very rapidly mm. through mm. those positive experiences. Mm. I feel when they become fixated on the Bible being God's word, as they do, they now discount the ability of God to write the word on their heart mm. And they also, unfortunately, remove themselves from the divine truth that I taught because, because there are large distortions of the divine truth in the Bible, just as there are large distortions on the divine truth in almost every book wow. that you could read. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, they finish up restricting themselves. Mm. And it's like, it's almost placing a self-imposed prison around yourself when you do that. Mm. God wants you to continue growing infinitely. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want you to be in a prison. Mm -hmm. so, so God wants a very, very different relationship than what the person who focuses on the Bible being God's word finishes up obtaining. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, once a person passes, many spirits realise that, that the Bible isn't all God's word. They realise, in fact, there are some things that are just outright lies in God's word and there are some things that are distortions of the truth in God's word as well as some truth. And they realise that sometimes many years after investigating it in the spirit world, 
And so they give up those concepts. And so then they find it easier to find God, ironically, mm. as a result of that. And that's what I'm suggesting to Christians on earth. You'll find it easier to find God if you allow God to write his word on your heart mm. rather than believing that the Bible is God's mm. word. Mm. You will find it much easier to find God that mm. way. Yes. Mm.